to Medis Off Training with Cheryl. Today I'm going to show you how to add in a new diagnosis code and a new CPT code. This is be this will be very good to learn being that ICD-10 codes are coming out. And of course, you're, if you have version 18 and up, it'll show you how to convert ICD-9 to ICD-10 if you already have the ICD-9 already there. So in most cases, you may have to add a, an ICD-9 or ICD-10 code. So today we're going to show you how to actually add in those new codes. Some people do not purchase the codes on disk, and in that case, they have to manually add in all their codes. So this will be great for those who have not done that at all. So the first thing you want to do is open your Metasoft. Then we're going to go to list, and then we'll go down to diagnosis codes. And again, you do see the icon of the picture there. So if you're more familiar with the picture icons, you can click this icon, and it will actually open up your diagnosis code list, which is right here at the top. So in this case, we do not have our conversion done, so you won't. we don't need to actually see the ICD-10 section. We really want to see the ICD-9. So the first thing you will need to do, and of course there will be codes here already, but you want to click New, and then another window will open. And then we're going to type in what our code is, and I'm just going to make up a code. Hopefully it's not one that's already in here. Okay, then I'm going to type in my description and I'm just going to say void because it's truly not a code, but you would need to type in your description of that code. Preferably try to match it with the code that's actually listed in the coding book. Just makes it easier rather than creating your own description of it. And then I'm going to click copy because this is the ICD-9 code of it. But it is not the ICD-10 code. So the ICD-10 code, let's say it's alphanumeric, and I'm not sure of what it is, but it would be a letter and number. So I'm going to do, because it'll look similar to that as ICD-10, and then I would type in my description. And then now we have our ICD-9 and our ICD-10 code. So since this was a new code that was entered in the system, I had to fill out both, and I had to convert it myself to the ICD-10. So once we enter all this information, we're going to click HIPAA approve because it is a HIPAA approve. The inactive code. So say there's a code that changed from 2014 to 2015. And in 2015, this code is no longer being used. Then I would click inactive code. So if I ever try to use this code or anyone tries to use it in our system, it'll give a message saying that this code is inactive. Do you still want to use it? But it will not automatically allow you to use that code. So once I click save then now my code will be in the system and if I wanted to confirm that I would type in my description and here's the code 100.0 and it's void so this is how you would enter in a diagnosis code now I'm going to show you how to do a CPT code and not just CPT codes goes here but also the payment and adjustment codes so I'm going to go to list go down to my procedure payment and adjustment codes and again you can click the picture icon if that's easier for you and if you notice here we CPT codes are five digits long so you want to make sure you do have a five digit code there's no decimals involved in it and if you notice we have it's not in any order but you'll also have your payment and adjustment codes here like insurance pay or um, insurance adjustments you see here like we have BP for uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield payment AP for Aetna payment you would have to enter the codes over here in order for them to travel over to your revenue management if you're posting um, electronic payment it needs to know what code to apply to so if you want to create a new code CPT or an adjustment code you would need to go to list procedure payments and adjustment codes or you will need to click the icon here and it will tell you this is your procedure code list so I already have insurance payment here I have Medicare and Medicaid payments these are codes that I will use in my transaction screen and I'll show you how to do that but in this case I'm going to create a new CPT code so I'm going to type in my code and it has to be five digits I'm going to put in my description and I'm going to say this one is void, but you need to make sure again, your description matches with what's in the CPT book. Under the code type, it gives you several options. So this is a procedure code, so I'm choosing procedure code. But if it was a billing charge or a copayment, or if it was a deductible or an adjustment, you want to make sure you choose correctly here because that affects whether you're going to have a code that will 
create a negative value or create a positive value when it comes to actually adjustment codes. So if I choose insurance adjustment, it, the system will know to deduct that uh, versus actually applying a payment. So in this case, this is a procedure charge, not a deduction or deductible, anything of that nature. So I'm going to click procedure charge. If you want to pre-set up the type of service and place of service, like I know for this code, it'll always be place of server 11. Um, if you want to tell it, don't bill a certain insurance on a bill, of, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield, you can set it up here. If there are certain modifiers that will always go with this code, then you can put the modifier code here. The same with revenue. And if there's a NDC code that goes with that, like injections, there are certain NDC codes that are assigned to certain injections or medication. If you put it here, whenever you choose in the transaction screen, it would automatically come over. So after you fill out the required information on this screen, we're going to do HIPAA approve. If it does require copay and it's taxable, then you will put that here. But do not mark purchase service so that it does not cause problems any other place in your system. The amounts, if you already know what the charge amount typically is for that, we're going to put that in here so that that amount populates automatically in the transaction screen. And if you know what the allowed amount will be per insurance, then you can type it here as well. And then you want to click save. Once I click save, then I can come over here and I'm going to search by my actual code. And there's my code. And just to show you what it will look like in a transaction screen, I'm going to go over to my transaction screen. I'm going to pull up a patient and I'm going to create a, not a new case. I'll just add it here. So I'll do new and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose my code. Here it is. I'm going to tab over and you see the $150 populated that I created. And then the code's already populated because it's looking at the previous case. But if I want to choose the code that I created in the system, then I will choose it here. I'm going to delete this one out. And as you see that the place of service already populated my pointers box check because I only have one diagnosis code and everything has completed. So this is what it will look like in the actual system. So this will be how you will add a diagnosis code in the system and a procedural code. And also if you wanted to add a payment code and I'll show you what that looks like at the bottom because you only apply payment adjustments and comments at the bottom you apply the charges at the top so I'm going to come down to the bottom create a new row and we're going to do insurance pay and here it is it pops up here I'm going to tab over and the, the who paid you can choose the actual patient's insurance or you can choose the um, adjustment one more thing I want to say, I know some of you are probably wondering why the allowed fee of $100 didn't populate. It's because I only entered the allowed fee for Aetna, and this patient has Aetna as a secondary, not as a primary, so that fee did not automatically fill out. So if I would have chose this patient's Aetna as a primary, then that fee would have filled out because I only set up the allowed fee for that particular insurance versus all of them. So back down at the bottom description, you can type what you want here, and then we will type in, say Medicare paid $100. Oh, we're not going to do $100 because the balance is $91, so we're going to say $50. And then it highlights in red. And then from this point, you will click apply and you apply the payment. So this is what it looks like in the screen when you actually use the payment adjustment code. And this is what it looked like when you add a new CPT code or ICD-9 code. So I'm going to delete this out because I did not want to apply that payment. And whenever you delete anything out or make changes, you have to do save transactions so that that will correct the balance at the top. So thank you for listening to me today and training with learning how to enter in a new diagnosis code and a CPT code. Look forward to working with you soon. Come back and you can always send me an email with questions. I'll be happy to answer them and I'll send you a response within 24 hours. Thanks. Bye-bye.